Hi, thanks for joining me in my first draft along video. Well, more like a hack along video. My original plan was to do draft along so along, but it's been five weeks since I first talked about that idea in my Facebook group, Drafting and Hacking with Millicent Joy. And I was realizing as my bump keeps growing, 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 my other to-do lists keep getting longer. And if I just stick to showing you how to hack or draft something, I'm going to be able to get out these videos much quicker and uh, more of them than doing the sew along. But I will also talk you through. Feel free to comment below if you have any questions about sewing or come over and join us in the Facebook group and I'm happy to help step you through any sewing. And we'll try it out this way and maybe down the road as I have more time I can add in some sewing videos. So let's get started with an off the shoulder uh, style sweater. So for this I am using um, my dandelion tea pattern because I love it so much but you can use any sort of knit shirt or uh, garment that you have that you know that you like the fit of and or a sloper or whatever works for you. So the first thing you're going to want to do normally your front this would be the fold here um, is you're going to want to trace this out so you have two of them and then you're going to want to tape them together. As you can tell by the size of my hand to this I'm using um, scaled down pattern pieces so they can fit more nicely into the frame. So there we have a full front piece as this is what it would look like if you cut it out of fabric. And I also have my sleeve. So my sleeve is on the fold and your sleeve may be a full sleeve front and back. So if that's the case, you're going to want the front curve to be facing towards the front here because that's construction wise how it would go together. So you're going to want to line it up. So this underarm seam is lined up with that and use weights or tape to temporarily hold those in place because you're not going to want those to shift around. So I've gone ahead and taped mine to the table so they don't slide around. You can use pattern weights or whatever to keep them in place. So now what you're going to do is draw a line starting from the regular shoulder seam here and coming down to be flat. So I'll just draw that in place like that. So a good point of reference is to start from from here to here to be about five inches. Play around with it, see how you like it, um, but this is typically what I do is five inches down there I find is a good starting point. Then with a ruler you're going to continue your line across and draw it across the sleeve cap here. Obviously you would use a ruler, I'm just roughing it in, but you would want these to be connected straight across here with a slight curve up to the top. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure right there is a 90 degree right angle and right here is a 90 degree right angle. So that may mean that you have to shave off some of the curve here to make it 90 degrees there and then you just draw it back down into the original line there that's fine you just for better construction 90 degrees there 90 degrees there now you may be wondering what this dot this bullseye going on here is this is the bust point of my pattern and this larger circle here is um, so from here to here is my bust radius so from my bust point to the outer edge of my breast. That's what it is. So I can see what my circle is, how much space. So if I were to want to do a crop top, I'm probably not going to want to crop it where it's cutting into my bust circle, but maybe that's fine if that's the look you're going for. Or maybe you want it to be an asymmetrical hem like this over top of your bust circle, and then you're layering a tank top underneath. So it just gives me a point of reference for when I'm drafting things like that. Um, and your circle, depending on your bust size, may actually extend past the shirt and that's totally fine. So once you've got it all drawn out, what you're going to do is go ahead and 
cut it off. So there's our front pattern piece. And here's our sleeve. So for me, with the pattern, I know that the front is very much like the back for the dandelion tee. So I would use this as my front and my back. So I would cut two of these mirrored and I would cut um, this one on the fold. And then I'd also cut one with the sleeve cap still on, on the fold for my other sleeve. But if your back pattern piece is very different than your front pattern piece, you're gonna to wanna to repeat this process again. You would have a full sleeve, most likely if that was the case, and you'd have the back arm's eye connected here and pretend this is a back pattern piece connected to here and you would do the same thing, drawing the line down and straight across from the front. And then you'd have your pattern pieces that way. Now, to sew this up for the neck band, what you'd want to do is measure from here all the way to here. And because it's the same for me, the front and the back, to multiply that by two and measure across here and multiply that by four because it's on the fold. So this one by two. If you had separate front and back, you would measure separate. One of the front neckline, one of the back line. And this is times four. And again, it's only because this here is on the fold. If you had a full pattern piece, a full sleeve piece, you would just multiply that by two. Um, correction. This actually is just by two. I'm getting it confused with my other sweater idea that I had where it was completely off both shoulders. This arm's eye, this sleeve over here is normal. This neckline is only going down here across the one sleeve in the back. So times two there, times two there because it's on the fold. If it was a full sleeve, times one. Then you add the neck band together. And I like to multiply it by 0.85, which is 85%. And then you add uh, your seam allowance. So if your seam allowance for the whole garment is 3 eighths of an inch, you're going to add 0.75 inches because your, pretend this is your neck band, you need seam allowance on either end for it to come together and stitch. So to sew this up, you're going to cut a front and a back. If it's the same pattern piece, it's mirrored. You're going to cut your regular sleeve on the fold, if it's on the fold, and you're going to cut your cropped sleeve on the fold. Then what you're going to do is basically just follow, for the most part, the sewing instructions from your pattern. Personally, my way of sewing is I like to have front and back, right sides together, stitch the side seams, stitch the shoulder seam. Then I take my sleeves, fold them right sides together and stitch the underarm seams. And then I like to turn it so the sleeve is right sides facing with the garment and I sew the sleeve like that and attach the sleeve in the circle all like that. Alternatively, patterns sometimes have it where you just do the shoulder seams and then you open the garment out and lay the sleeve in and you sew around the arm's eye of the sleeve there and here. And then in one pass, you sew the underarm and down the side of the garment. So whichever you prefer, you can assemble this either way. And then you would assemble the neckline and then hem it and you're done. One thing I forgot to mention way at the very beginning, and I will go back and put a caption there, is you want to make sure you've trimmed off your seam allowance before doing this hack um, so that you can get a proper neckband measurement and proper like fitting of under the arm. And then when you go to sew it up or cut out your fabric, add your seam allowance back in everywhere. Yes, I know it's a hassle step, but you'll be happy you did in the end. 
Also, if you wanted a cropped look, like I talked about before, you can take note of where your bust point is. You can take note of where your waistline is. And all you have to do is cut your pattern. So if I want this to end at my natural waist, I'm just going to cut along at my natural waist. And now I have my crop sweater. And then you'd want to make sure that when you cut, you also allowed for a hem to like turn under and hem it. Or if you're banding it, or technically with knit, if you just want to leave it raw, if that's the look you're going for. Um, other fun hems that you could do is start always with a 90 degree at the side seams. Otherwise it'll get wonky and you'll get a point when you assemble them together. But for example, if you wanted to start with the 90 degrees there and dip up and come back down and dip down for the front, if you wanted it to peak up a bit or be asymmetrical, totally up to you. Um, so yeah, if you go ahead and make this, feel free to join us in the Drafting and Hacking with Milson Joy Facebook group and post what you've made. I'd love to see what you created and feel free to comment below to let me know other ideas that you want to have or what you thought about this style of video. It's something new I'm playing around with and yeah, I hope you tune in again.